The implementation of the Lagos panel report is a sacred duty for Songolu, says Chidi Odinkalu, as Lagos rejects panel's casualty figure. And Babajide Songolu initiates a peace walk as part of efforts to ensure harmony in the state. For well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacorn. Uh, former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission, Professor Chidi Odinkalu, has stated that the implementation of the report from the Lagos NSAS Judicial Panel of Inquiry is a sacred duty for Governor Babajiri Songolu. Also, the Lagos State Government has rejected the resolution of the Judicial Panel of Inquiry, stating that no fewer than nine persons lost their lives when armed soldiers stormed the Lekki tollgate to disperse NSAS protesters on October the 20th of 2020. Well, joining us to discuss this is a legal practitioner, Jide Ologun. Thank you very much, Barista Ologun, for joining us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Great. I know that you must have perused through the pages of the white paper because uh, it's been made public. A lot of people have copies of it. Um, what was the first thing that came to mind when you saw the white paper? You know, the white paper is the response of the government to the reports of the Judicial Inquiry Panel. And there were divided expectations. Some expected that, okay, if Lagos State has been bold enough to present these reports, which indicted the government and probably described what many have held as what happened in, at the Lekki Toll Gate on 20th of October, 2020 that the white paper should go ahead to establish those findings. And some were expecting that perhaps the government would like to cover up some of the elements of the report. Mm -hmm. you know, and that sprang from those who monitored what appeared to be like an intimidating response from the federal government. Recall that the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Chiflai Mohamed, said it was the that report was a tail by moonlight and of course the minister of state for labor Festus Kiyamo, Sun advocate of nigeria also came out to say that the state trying to prove some uh, the military and police is illegal so if you look at that background you may expect that the white paper may not reflect some of the reports of the uh, the, um, the critical report here is the description of what happened at the Lekki Toll Gate on the 20th of October 2020 mm -hmm. as a massacre. And the report further stated that at least 46 unarmed protesters were either shot dead, injured with bullets, or assaulted by security forces. Mm -hmm. You know, and what the white paper is admitting now is that only one person died. <laughs> day on the 21st of October 2020 and there was nothing to establish that the death resulted from gunshot from the military. But having said that also, it's been admitted that there were gun wounds and, you know, it's so difficult to have gun wounds without having people dying, you know. And this is where we are right now and the government is calling for peace. You know also that the governor invited some of the actors during the NSAS protest we, to come and yeah. embark on a peace walk. Before we him, get before we get to that we, part, before we get to that part, let's look at some of the you know the the, the things that are in this particular white paper because um, I listened to the attorney general of the state um, um, and he was on uh, I think a Rice TV this morning trying to um, debunk you know what was in the white paper. So I'm going to ask you a very straight question for someone who's been studying what the panel has done and now the recommendations on the white paper. Why do you think that the government seem, seems not to agree with the number of people that the panel has put forward um, uh, uh, as a result of the fact that they made findings? 
They're saying that it's just one person. They countered it, saying that um, the recommendation is not acceptable to Lagos state government for the following reasons. I'll give you. Uh, they said the finding of the JPI at page 288, paragraph M, is that the evidence of the pathologist, uh, Professor Obafunwa, uh, that only three bodies that they conducted post-mortem uh, examination on were from Lecky, and only one had gunshots injury, and this was not debunked. So I'm thinking to myself, for those who, um, because there were protests all over Lagos, there were protests on the mainland and, of course, on the island, could they have brought somebody from, let's say, all the way from mile three to um, Reddington to treat his gun, gunshots wounds? Don't forget, every single place was blocked. Is there a possibility that someone who was shot on the mainland was brought to uh, an island hospital and treated of gunshot wounds? You know, we need to go through the value chain of this NSTARS protest crisis management. Recall that when it happened, right from that 28th October 2020, there were live streaming of what was going on there, <clears throat> lights of gunshots, screamings, and obviously we have not denied the fact that these harmless citizens, these defenseless citizens, were singing the national anthem, they were waving the Nigerian flag, and suddenly, the, the gunshots came, hitting them. And at the point, it was argued that what CNN presented was trying to doctor uh, some issues. You know, and again, uh, we came all by saying, OK, maybe they used blank bullets. At the time, there was an attempt to even deny that the military was there. But when you saw the IT monitoring presentation that were presented, and it became, you know, important to try and manage that crisis. And I think that is what the government has tried to do. But having said that also, it has become difficult to establish that someone died. And you know the position of the law, particularly when it comes to the criminal justice value chain, you must prove the allegations beyond all reasonable doubts. And I think that is what is playing out here now. And then um, don't forget that the reports that leaked indicted the state governor, the Lagos state governor, by saying he invited the military. He allowed the military to come in. And some have said, what did the military come to do to disperse the protesters? Was it in a peaceful manner? Because if you look at the fundamental human rights as it recognized universally, you have right to life, right to dignity, right to personal liberty, right to fair hearing, right to privacy, right to freedom of thought, conscience, religion, freedom of expression. In fact, the government was expected to protect the protesters. So now that that happened, you must now go ahead in time. If the government admits that there was a massacre, at the Lekki Toll Gate on the 20th of October 2020. Our president and those who released the, the military and the police to go and attack the peaceful protesters may find themselves in jail when they leave office because as a governor, as a, a president, you have immunity in the International Criminal Court. You see, so you, you must expect that this will be practically managed to minimize the impact on the players. And one of the recommendations of the of the panel was that the, the federal government they should make an open apology mm. to the victims. And so here we are now, we are saying, okay, only one person died. We cannot even link that death to the intervention of the military and the police. But like I said earlier, we have not been able to debunk the fact, or the government has not been able to debunk the fact that there were gun wounds and that there was police brutality. So you can see police brutality now being used to quell a peaceful protest against police brutality. So it's a very difficult one. Mm. But going down the path of history, I think it may be characteristic in, in, in nature. Uh, I recall that in Lagos State at the time, that should be the 4th of June, 1996, Elijah Pedro Tabiola was killed, you know, by unknown gunmen. And we covered it up until the likes of Rogers, you know, uh, uh, this man that went to jail, 
featured as, uh, as, as state actors who played prominent roles in the assassinations that took place in Lagos State then. So here we are. And don't forget also when it comes to the issue of government reports and stuff like that, at a point in time in this country, the fairest, the most credible, the most transparent election, Pope 93, was annulled by the head of state, who later in time was compelled to say he didn't do it alone. But genuine reasons in court were given for the annulment of that result. Don't forget also that at the Okuta panel, there were evidences given to how Chief MQ Abiola died. So what have we done with all this? So it's, it's, it's a matter of, uh, for us, in, in public relations, it's a reactive way of managing uh, crisis. But having said I'm, that, I'm curious. Just, the white paper second. is I'm... the official position oh. of the government. Okay, uh, all I've heard in all that you've been saying since we started, um, it seems you're trying to say that the, the government, especially the government of Lagos State, is trying to wiggle its way out of, you know, the rep repercussion or the repercussionary effect of the truth that is behind um, this report. But then there are those who argue that the truth is relative in, and, and when facts and truths are put side by side, uh, the facts are actually always over, overweigh, um, you know, in terms of, you know, evidences that are brought forth. And you made, made mention to that. So I want to ask again, do you think the Lagos State government is trying to wiggle its way out of this and one way or the other, trying to save face, um, including that of the federal government. Is there undue pressure? Is there undue pressure from the federal government uh, to kill this? I'm not holding brief for the Lagos State government, but I must say this is a very difficult situation for the state to handle. Like I said, if the state government came out to say that there was a massacre <clears throat> at the Lekki toll gate, it's not only the governor himself that may be queried when he leaves office and is no longer under the shadow of immunity. The president and commander in chief of the armed forces that gave direction, whether through uh, the chief of army staff uh, or through the inspector general of police, for that intervention on the 20th of October, 2020, are likely to find themselves in the International Criminal Court. Don't forget that we have some West African presidents that uh, you recall the case of Charles Taylor, but then we have not been able to successfully establish that there are no infractions of human rights. So that is a key issue now. Like I said, no one is saying now that there was not use of brutal force that night. No one is saying there are no gun wounds. What we are saying now is that, okay, this you claimed a nine persons died, but we are admitting that only one person died. And even that corpse cannot be linked to the intervention of the military and the police. The big question now, like you brilliantly asked, is that did anybody import that corpse to that place? And don't forget also, as part of the drama we have witnessed here, at the time the Hon uh, Honorable Minister of Works discovered a camera suddenly at the venue. Now he is telling the journalists, don't ask me what happened to that camera. We also got a report that um, the LCC that manages the toll gate they tried to manipulate the the you know the recorded clips. So while you put all this together, you may want to probably move in the direction of those who think there is an attempt to cover up. But then the issues with NSAS protests are still there police brutality, what are we going to do to ensure that we have a police system that runs in line with the established vision and mission of facilitating an enabling environment for sustainable development and who are friends of the people who play by the rules? And how do we come to the point where the citizens can trust the government? Okay. How do we come to the point where we can now say the primary purpose of government, which is the security and the welfare of the people, are being delivered upon by the constituted authority mandated to so deliver. So these are several issues. Now, so I do not at this point envy the executive governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwulu, in managing this crisis. So like I said, 
we all, I mean, majority of us witnessed the response of the federal government. The president himself came out to say, okay, we've gotten the report from Lagos State. <clears throat> we have to wait for the other states. The minister of uh, information came out to say it's still by moonlight. The uh, minister of state for labor came out to say that it was illegal. So when you look at all those frantic efforts, some may conclude that those were gestures, you know, built up to intimidate but the I Lagos state. And when you talk about the white paper, the white paper should be the formal report from the government, even though the government set up the judicial panel. Mm -hmm. They are the ones to say, we have received your reports, no matter whatever number of reports that you have given unto us, and these are the ones we agree with. So, and that's why the governor is, I think, is making reference to the closure of this matter. But you may close on the report, but can we claim to have closed on the issues that are plaguing that, our that, society? That's, 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 where I'm, that's what I'm still struggling with. I'm still struggling with, if the government is saying that nobody really died, or the, person, the only cops, according to them, that they have been able to um, recognize factually, uh, may not have really died at the lucky toll. Does it make it right in any way what has happened? Don't forget, the army was invited into a policing issue, an issue with, that people were talking about uh, the injustices that have been meted out on innocent Nigerians by police, the high-handedness of police. And then the army was introduced into a place where innocent people who had no guns, they were harmless, they were just protesting. Again, you're saying that people did not die. Does it mean that the people who were injured, people who were shot at, those who were involved in that stampede um, are not going to get justice? Is this what the Lagos State government is saying? And, and saying that, calling for a closure of this case, I'm trying to understand, does this not make mockery of the whole, all, the whole process what, from the panel that was instituted up until now? Does it not just totally make a, a mess of it? You know, what, what wonderful question there, and I may want to ask you a question. What came out of the National Confab of 2014 with all the millions that were spent on it? So that's the big deal. And some are of the opinion now that if you constituted a panel that sat for one year, admitted evidences from people listening to, listened to witnesses, to key stakeholders, and came up with this report. And you are now saying that there were so many discrepancies. And I agree with the fact that there may be discrepancies. When you have a matter in court and you are invited to come and listen to the judgment of the court, the court will not rule out all the arguments in that matter. The court will rule out the specifics, considerations, and decisions. So the government is saying now, we've given you an assignment you brought your report, but well, this is what we are willing to accept. And going forward, you may be inviting some personalities to come and serve the government and the decline, which has already happened now. You, I mean, we witnessed how the governor has invited files and some stakeholders during the protest to come for a peace war. And the response is that you have to walk alone, Mr. Governor, because for many, the driving force behind peace is justice. So people are now saying, <clears throat> is this justice? And talking about justice like you requested, there are several levels of justice, justice within the human community and justice with God. I recall that in Genesis chapter four, Genesis chapter four, uh, verse one to 18, that Cain rose up to kill his brother Abel. Nobody saw him and then God came to him to say, hey, what did you do? And then he had his excuses for the blood of Abel cried from where it was laid. And so putting all these reports together, I think those who have conscience and those who participated actively on that gory night of 28th of October 2020 should be waiting that if man fails to pin them to what they have done, God, we ask them, when they step out of the universe. So, and for that society, largely, we are still yearning for justice. Mm. And if you read section 17 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, it says that the platform of our coexistence shall be that of justice, of freedom, of equity. So 
Can we have that justice? Can we have a society where we do not need to jump up and protest and, you know, shout and scream for the right things to be done? And even when we are compelled to protest, demanding for the right things to be done, that we do that under a safe environment and such a peaceful movement is not encountered with brutal force. And uh, that is where we are right Quickly, now. before we wrap up, because we're almost out of time, I want to quote the, you know, some of the recommendations or one, one that really stuck out for me um, in terms of getting justice for the people. Um, the JPI's report, uh, quoting them, it stated that the panel recommended disciplinary actions um, to the following officers. I'd like to call their names. Lieutenant Colonel S. Obelo, Major General Godwin Umelo, who refused to honor summons to the panel in order to frustrate uh, the investigation. Now, of course, there were other um, disciplinary measures that were asked to be meted out to the military officers dis uh, deployed to disperse protesters at the Lekki toll gate and to the federal government and the National uh, Economic Council. So this is what the Lagos State paper read, the white paper. It said, and I quote, the Lagos State government notes that it will forward this recommendation to the federal government, the National Economic Council and the Nigerian army for their consideration. All officers, excluding Major General Lomata and men of the Nigerian army that were deployed to the Lekki toll gate on October 20 of 2020 should be made to face appropriate disciplinary action, stripped of their status and dismissed as they are not fit and proper to serve in any public or security service to the nation. But I'm wondering how this is going to happen if already uh, they're, they're discrediting a lot of things and pointing to discrepancies is this is this really ever going to happen based on the fact that the army you has know, to it, consider it, it? You know, from the from the report in the white paper, about fourteen recommendations have been classified as being outside the jurisdiction of the state, and I think that is one of them, and that is where uh, uh, Festus Kiyamu, senior advocate of Nigeria, may be right that you don't have at the state level the prerogative to question the activities or, you know, uh, discipline the military and the police. But let me read this out. This Lieutenant Colonel Bello, who is fingered as being a key player in the in what happened at the Lekki Toll Gate on the 20th of October 2020, has, you know, has his uh, promotion in place. You know, it, it's quite interesting. I think there should be a report uh, that the Army Council met on 28th October to approve the promotion of officers. And he's one of the beneficiaries. And let me take us back, wonderful Nigerians and our lovely audience, to what happened with Wadume, the kingpin kidnapper suspect. The Nigerian policemen trained <coughs> went to arrest, and they were relayed by the military. And even though reportedly the policemen tried to introduce themselves, they were killed. Some of them were killed by the soldiers. And the soldiers took this suspect away, released him. And now they have not even been able to come for effective prosecution because the military claims that they are still going through material processes and whatever. So when you talk about justice, the greatest summary we have as lawyers is that justice should not only be done, but clearly seem to have been done. Okay. Like I said earlier, those who annulled the June 12th election, they know themselves. <clears throat> Nigerians are still asking who killed Delegua. Nigerians are still asking who killed Chibola Ige. Nigerians are still asking several questions. But then, okay. if it's difficult to get justice with man, it is definitely certain that the justice of God will prevail. But okay. by and large, we need a society where we can rejoice and be free and be proud to say this is a great nation. And may I advise the government, you need the trust capital to excel in office. And right now, right. I think we are building off walls rather than creating that trust capital. Because it's becoming difficult for many to trust their government to do what is right. Well, I want to thank you. Jide Logo is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for speaking uh, on this issue. Well, uh, what is left to be done remains to be seen. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless Nigeria.
All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Uh, we'll take a quick break. And when we return, Governor Babajide Songolu initiates a peace walk of harmony in Lagos State. Well, we'll get to talk about it after this break.